To do the examples in these classes, you will of course need Perl. Fortunately, you probably already have it. If you have any version of Linux, it almost certainly comes with Perl already installed on it. If you have Windows, then you should get Strawberry Perl, which you can download free from this URL. You'll find that it works just the same as the one on Linux. If you have a Macintosh, you should already have Perl installed on that, since OS X is a variant of Unix. If you have a computer with another kind of operating system on it, Perl has almost certainly already been ported to that operating system, and your computer probably has Perl installed on it to begin with. If not, I will address that in an appendix. Nearly all of the code in this class will run unmodified on all of the platforms that run Perl. The appendix, as I said, will show you how to install Perl if you don't already have it. This course is going to be demonstrated on a Linux platform, which is probably the most widespread use of Perl at the moment. Some later lessons would require a little modification to run on some other kinds of platform. Descriptions of those modifications are outside the scope of this class, but if you look in the documentation Perl doc Perl port, you can get some information that is useful for figuring out how to do those ports to other operating systems. Most of the code in these classes would actually work with Perl version 5.0 but that came out a really long time ago, and I hope you're not running that. Don't even consider any version of Perl before 5.6.1, which addressed certain severe security issues, but even that one is really old itself, having come out in 2001. Version 5.8.8 of Perl is the oldest one that we could consider to be not old. It is the oldest supported version of Perl. This class will be demonstrated using Perl 5.14.2. Now, many features were added between 5.8.8 and 5.14.2, and I will call out any time I use a feature that is more recently introduced than version 5.8.8. .8. But in general, I will strive to use Perl features that are compatible with Perl 588 wherever possible, because the versions of Perl that you will find that come with most modern operating systems may not be any more recent than 588. If you've heard about something called Perl 6, that's something else altogether. It is not an incremental upgrade of Perl 5, it is being maintained in a separate track. It is a complete ground-up redesign of the Perl language. While much Perl 5 code would run unmodified under Perl 6, backwards compatibility is not assured. Furthermore, Perl 6 does not yet ship with any commercial operating systems, and while it is almost ready for production, it is still considered experimental. We will not be discussing Perl 6 in these classes. I will not spend much time on this section because you will need to have some experience already in editing and running Perl programs in order for this course to be applicable to you. Avoid editors that do any formatting of the text because they will introduce codes that are not recognizable as part of Perl syntax. If you do use an editor that does that, make sure you save your program as ordinary text. However, preferably you should use an editor that understands Perl syntax and can even highlight it for you. For instance, Emacs or VI or Vim are combinations that know how to do that. An integrated development environment is nice, but an editor and a shell window together work just as well, and that's the combination that I will be using in this class not just because it is a lowest common denominator, but because it's also a very common practice of most of the best programmers and developers in the Perl community right now who do not find an IDE adds significantly to their productivity. 
if you're looking for an IDE, then the Eclipse environment does have a plugin for Perl. For you to get the most value and enjoyment out of this course, there are things about Perl that you need to already know. They are taught in my earlier course, Perl Fundamentals. I will review them here briefly, and then we will go into an example that covers those so that you can determine whether or not you feel comfortable proceeding with the rest of these lessons. You need to know basic Perl syntax, the statement and block-oriented nature of the language, how to write conditions, how to write loops. You need to know about Perl's basic data types, scalars, arrays, and hashes and basic regular expression syntax, literal atoms, character classes, and quantifiers. You might know those things, but not these names for them, but you will understand whether or not you know those already when we go through the review. Basic input and output, how to read and write files. You should also already know how to write and call subroutines. And finally, how to find out things that you don't already know about, which is through the Perl doc program. I'll be referring to that throughout this course. Now we're going to do a practical example that will demonstrate most of the features of the language that I just reviewed in the slides. This is designed to test your existing knowledge of Perl, not in any sort of examination kind of sense, but to give you an idea of whether you're ready to take on the rest of this class. If you feel challenged with this to the extent that you're uncomfortable, then you may want to go and review the earlier series, Perl Fundamentals. You can see here that we're running Perl 5.14.2, by typing Perl v and it's coming from user local bin Perl. That is not the system Perl. This is a Perl that I have built myself. The system Perl has been unmodified and that lives in user bin. And you can see that the version of that Perl is 510. We will be using user local bin Perl in the shebang line of all of the scripts. What we're going to be doing in this example here is parsing a text file, which is a more or less faithful conversion of a web page that contains information about winners of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences Award, otherwise known as Oscars, for the years since 1970 through 2011. If you'd like an exercise later on, you can track down the source of that and add in the earlier year's data. I kept this short just so that we wouldn't be overwhelmed by data. Now you can see here something that is fairly typical of the kind of text parsing task that we are often asked to do with Perl. The data lies somewhere between formatted and unformatted. At first sight it looks formatted, but as you read more through this text file, which is supplied along with the code with these videos, you see that there are exceptional cases and variations on the way that things are stored. Sometimes it says producer, sometimes it says co-producer, sometimes writing credits have extra information in, and so on. We're going to write a program that will parse this text file and figure out some interesting statistics about it. Look for the most popular director, picture, that kind of thing, satisfying various criteria.